Hello everybody, my name is Mayuri Kotian and I am a postgraduate in wildlife conservation and I currently work as a research assistant at Project Dhwani, which is a research collaboration aimed towards understanding the relationship between biodiversity and forest management using acoustics. Today, I am presenting a paper titled Measuring Biodiversity Using Sound, How Effective Are Acoustic Indices for Quantifying Biodiversity case from a tropical dry forest. This is a joint work with my fellow authors Siddharth Binivali, Research Associate at Project Dhwani, Pravad Maurya, also a Research Associate at Project Dhwani, Zuzana Burivalova, Assistant Professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and Pooja Choksi, PhD candidate at Columbia University and Principal Scientist at Project Dhwani. Passive acoustic monitoring is proposed as a rapid method for biodiversity assessment and monitoring ecological changes across large spatiotemporal regions using large amounts of acoustic data. Acoustic indices under passive acoustic monitoring measure soundscapes by mathematically summarizing the distribution of acoustic energy in them. Some acoustic indices have been previously found to correlate with avian species richness and diversity which can help monitor tropical biodiversity and make informed forest management decisions. For example, the Acoustic Complexity Index was found to have correlation with avian species richness in a temperate biome. However, inconsistencies are being seen in acoustic indices across biomes. For example, Eldridge et al. found that ACI correlates with avian richness in a temperate biome in the UK but not in a tropical forest in Ecuador and therefore more research is needed on the use of acoustic indices in different types of biomes, especially in tropical dry forests and socio-ecological systems which are highly underrepresented in the body of literature on acoustic indices. Our research objective is to test the efficacy of six commonly used acoustic indices, the Acoustic Complexity Index, the Bioacoustic Index, the Acoustic Diversity Index, Acoustic Evenness Index, Total Entropy and the Normalized Different Soundscape Index to quantify the avian species richness and acoustic activity. We conducted this study in the officially designated buffer area of Kanha National Park which lies in the sub-district Bichya in the district Mandla, which is part of the Central Indian Highlands, an important conservation area for threatened species such as the Bengal tiger, the Indian leopard and the sloth bear. The landscape is dominated by tropical deciduous vegetation and holds one of the largest scheduled caste and tribe members who depend on timber and non-timber forest products. These forests form classic socio-ecological systems managed by local communities for livelihood and subsistence. We collected data in the form of one minute samples every five minutes throughout a day using Audiomoth acoustic recorders. This was performed over a period of seven to 10 days during winter 2020 and 2021. We then selected a random sample of at least 50 minutes per recorder location during the dawn hours 5.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. The manual data annotation was performed by dividing the one minute samples into 10 second clips for ease of annotation. Authors Siddharth and Pravar manually investigated each 10 second clip to mark the presence or absence of species. This resulted in a species presence absence matrix. We annotated a total of 57.5 hours and identified a total of 137 avian species across all sites. To summarize, each one minute long passive acoustic recording was first broken down into 10 second clips. These 10 second clips were used for manual data annotation which resulted in the avian species richness per 10 second clip. The same clips were then used for computing the acoustic indices using the sound ecology package in R. We then used the fpeaks function and the mean spec function in the C-Wave package in R 
to compute the number of peaks per 10 second clip. We define our, the acoustic activity in our site as the total number of peaks detected in each 10 second clip. We then performed a correlation analysis to test the efficacy of each individual acoustic index. We then used a model selection approach using the linear mixed effects model to test the efficacy of combined indices where we also considered the multicollinearity between the variables. We then used a random forest classification model to evaluate the variable importance of the predictor variables. Specifically, we ask the following questions. First, do acoustic indices correlate with the total number of peaks? Second, do acoustic indices correlate with the avian species richness? And third, does the combination of acoustic indices correlate with the avian species richness and the number of peaks across all sites? In our one-to-one -one correlation analysis, Using the Pearson's correlation coefficient, we found weak positive or negative correlations between all indices and the number of peaks. However, we found that BI outperformed the other indices as it had a relatively higher coefficient value. We found similar results for avian species richness in our sites where we found that BI had a relatively higher coefficient of correlation compared to the other indices. We also see significant results for all indices, which we believe is an effect of the large sample size. Additionally, in our linear mixed effects model, we found a weak predictive ability of all indices combined for both number of peaks and avian species richness with R square values of the top selected models less than or equal to 0.4. In this statistical approach, we found BI as a consistent predictor variable in all top 10 models for both response variables. In addition to the parametric models, we found that in the resulting random forest models for both our response variables, the number of peaks and the avian species richness, BI was a highly important variable in predicting both these response variables. To summarize, we found the results of all statistic models aligning and leaning towards BI as a potential indicator of biodiversity in our sites. We believe that acoustic indices can be broadly classified into two categories based on soundscape characteristics. First, the evenness-based indices which quantify the distribution of acoustic energy across frequency bands. And second, the intensity-based indices which quantify the variation in the intensity of the sound signals across frequency and time. We expected the evenness-based indices such as ADI, AEI, H and NDSI to correlate with the number of peaks or the acoustic activity in our sites as more activity across frequency bands would directly result in an even distribution of energy across all bands. Similarly, we expected the intensity-based indices which are known to capture irregularity in sounds which are characteristic of bird vocalizations to correlate with avian species richness. However, contrary to our expectations, we found weak correlations between the indices and the response variables except for BI. We speculate that we found BI to have more potential as this index is a function of both intensity and the number of frequency bands used. Additionally, we believe that the poor performance of the indices in tropical dry forests may also be influenced by factors such as the vegetation structure. For example, in a densely vegetative forest such as the tropical humid forests, sound propagates differently than in a tropical dry forest. Higher density of vegetation such as a large number of stems, leaves, branches may cause a scattering effect of the sound signals thus leading to a higher overall signal attenuation compared to a less dense tropical dry forest. 
Therefore, in a tropical dry forest, sound may travel farther than in a tropical humid forest, thus displaying a more complex soundscape than in reality. Moreover, apart from the across biome differences that we see in the performance of the indices, we may also see within biome differences as the indices may be affected by the regional vocalizing community structure, which include mammals, amphibians, birds, insects, and to some extent, humans. However, for the scope of this study, we focused on avifauna as they are easier to identify using an astronomical amount of available resources. We thus conclude that acoustic indices, individual or combined, could be indicators of diversity in some biomes, but we find that in a socio-ecological system such as this central Indian tropical dry forest, AIs do not quantify biological diversity completely. However, we recommend BI as a viable option for rapid acoustic surveys in tropical dry forests and a potential indicator of biodiversity in this region. And on that note, I would like to thank you all for your time. Thank you.